Similar to supernovae or gamma ray bursts, but with a completely unknown origin, luminous fast blue optical transients or LFBOTs, Luftbots, are extraordinarily bright flashes coming from deep space. The Hubble Space Telescope has now gotten involved, and it's made things even more surprising and confusing. It observed one basically completely free-floating in space, not living inside any host galaxy. This suggests that we actually know even less about these mysterious flashes than we thought we did. So what the heck is going on here? LFBOTs were discovered in 2018. Only seven have been seen. That's a discovery rate of about one per year, and we don't know what causes them. They seem to be similar to supernovae, but they brighten and dim much faster, and the colours they emit are much more centred around the blue part of the electromagnetic spectrum. They might well be the result of stars exploding, just like supernovae, but somehow they're different, and they occur at less than 0.1% the typical rate of supernovae. A leading idea is that they're stars being torn apart by black holes, that are somewhere between a hundred and a thousand times the mass of the sun. But we just don't know if this or the supernova idea is correct yet. It could be one of them, or it could be neither. Once we noticed this LFBOT, several telescopes were pointed at it, including Hubble. It was first spotted by the Zwicky Transient Facility, an enormous ground-based telescope with a very wide field of view. It's designed specifically to look for transient objects evolving in the night sky, and it surveys the entire sky in the northern hemisphere every two days. It spotted this bright blue flash on April 10th, 2023. And this observation triggered a pre-planned program of follow-up observations involving many telescopes, including Hubble. This is cool because Hubble has incredible spatial resolution, and it was able to pinpoint the exact location of the source of this very bright flash, something the other telescopes involved couldn't do very precisely at all. What Hubble found was a surprise, because the flash was far away from any host galaxy. This means that whatever used to exist but then exploded to give us this burst of blue light was just going rogue, hanging out in deep space all on its own. It was seen about 50,000 light years from the large spiral galaxy we can see in this image pretty easily, and about 15,000 light years from a smaller galaxy that's also kind of nearby. This isn't 100% unheard of, but it is unusual. Some stars can get thrown out of galaxies and wander the universe alone, but the odds of one of them being able to produce an LFBOT is very small, so this whole thing is really surprising. Something else that I found surprising is that astronomers seem to be giving all of the Luftbots that we discover funny little nicknames. This new one has been named the Finch, although its official name is AT2023FHN, and other names for other LFBOTs include the koala and the cow. I don't really know why this is happening, but I kind of love it. Other than its strange location, the Finch is pretty much a textbook Luftbot. It shone very brightly in blue light. It was a boiling 20,000 degrees Celsius, and it evolved and then dimmed very quickly, reaching peak brightness and then fading away again in just a few days. Unlike normal supernovae, which take weeks or months to dim. I'm also switching between LFBOT and Luftbots just on how I feel, because both of them are pretty fun to say. The more LFBOTs that we see, the more they shock us. But maybe that's always bound to happen since we only see about one per year. So our knowledge of them in general is pretty limited and based on only these few events. If they are caused by rare supernovae, then they would come from gargantuan stars that are very short-lived on cosmological timescales. This means that they don't normally travel too far, so it's hard for us to understand how one of them could get so far away from any galaxies. Did it just form in the middle of nowhere, or did it form in one of those galaxies and then get rapidly kicked out by some other explosion or some gravitational interaction? And then the next question is, did this vicious journey have anything to do with it exploding and emitting an LFBOT? If this even is what happened. We just don't know yet. This one remains the outlier, since all the other Luftbots so far have been seen inside the arms of spiral galaxies, nestled within clusters of young stars. One idea currently being explored for the origin of these flashes is that of colliding neutron stars. This would mean they were a class of kilonova instead of supernova, but we do have precedent for this. Just the other day, we discussed JWST observing one of these kilonovae far from any galaxy. So this sort of thing definitely can occur in isolation and away from any other galaxy. And these flashes have been spotted by other great observatories. That one wasn't an LFBOT, but maybe it's possible that they could produce them. 
emerging neutron stars produce powerful explosions that produce many heavy elements as they explode. And maybe under some circumstances, they can also produce LFBOTs. An additional and admittedly speculative idea is that one of the neutron stars involved has an incredibly powerful magnetic field, making it a so-called magnetar. Then this might be able to amplify the explosion to the required levels, making it about a hundred times brighter than a regular supernova. I'm sure some of you are wondering about JWST in this case too. And while I don't believe JWST was turned to look at the Finch, its powerful infrared instruments and their incredible precision and resolution would be excellent for teaching us more about these strange flashes and where they come from. Because of this, I'm definitely hoping we get to see some JWST LFBOT action in the very near future. We need to see many more of these things to get the answers to these questions and to figure out exactly what's causing these bright blue flashes in deep space. Discoveries like this one are exciting but baffling, and to be honest, they often pose more questions than they answer. Since astronomical transients like this can appear at any location at any time, we need to continue to monitor the whole sky and trigger fast follow-up observations with telescopes like Hubble when we do spot them. Let me know your thoughts on this surprising flash in the comments down below, and if you have any theories to discuss or questions to ask, then let's do that in the comments section too. And thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!